Hello. In this video we're going to look at another example, an application of vector and resolving the vector into components to find some kind of force. So here in this example you have two muscles, muscle A and muscle B. They're attached to a bone at this point and muscle A exerts a force of 900 newtons on the bone at that at an angle of 8 degrees and it's understood here when they say at an angle of alpha of 8 degrees that it's with the horizontal here and that the bone is at like 0 degrees. While muscle B exerts a force of 750 newtons on the bone at an angle of 30, beta 33 degrees. Now obviously this isn't to scale, um, but find the resultant force and the angle of the force due to muscle A and muscle B on the bone. Okay. So essentially what we want to do is we have two right triangles here. So let me draw that out. We have from muscle A we have basically an 8 degree uh, triangle. 8 degrees here with the horizontal and a force of 900 newtons and this is understood to be a right triangle where this is the bone here on the horizontal there. Then we have muscle B acting at 33 degrees to the horizontal, right here's your right triangle, and you have 33 degrees and 750 newtons is your force on that. So you have two different forces acting and you want to know what is the resultant force. Now technically since you have, you can, re what we're going to do is resolve this force, 900 newtons, into its horizontal and vertical components and the 750 into its horizontal and vertical components and then we can add the horizontal components together because they're going in the same direction and we can add the vertical components and essentially we have a new vector. So let's take a look here. Alright, so if we resolve this then the horizontal component x here and the vertical component y, the horizontal component here x, vertical component here y. So in this case we have that x is the adjacent and so we can use relative to the 8 degrees. This is the adjacent and this is the opposite, right? So we can say for the x that uh, cosine of 8 degrees is x over 900, right? Here's the hypotenuse. Alright, so then when we actually solve for x we get 900 cosine of 8 degrees and that will give us 891.24 newtons. We can do the same thing for y. We have the sine of 8 degrees is equal to y over 900 and so y will be 900 sine of 8 degrees and we'll you'll get 125.26 newtons is why again be careful to be sure that you're in degree mode so we've resolved these this vector 900 into its components in the horizontal direction we have 891.24 newtons in the vertical we have 125.26 newtons and again there is no part of the vertical that is in any way affecting the horizontal and the same thing is true for the horizontal. The horizontal is pure horizontal. Has There's absolutely nothing horizontal that's a part of the component of the vertical. That's why you can separate them and then add them. Okay. So let's do the same thing here. I'll, I'll speed it up here though. X is going to be 750 cosine of 33 degrees. So you're going to get 629. Y is going to be 750 sine of 33 degrees. So you get 408.48, right? So technically you now have a new vector then that you're going to add the x's. So this x with that x and this y with that y. And so now the resultant, you're going to have, let's call this x1 and x2, y1 and y2. So let's just keep that kind of um, y1, y1. Here, let's keep all that kind of straight. Okay. Alright, so we're going to add these. So x1 plus x2 is going to give me 891.24 plus 629. It's going to give me 1520.24. Okay. 
and then y1 plus y2 is going to give me 125.26 plus 408.48. So a total of 533.74. So the idea is we now have a new vector, the resultant vector, which has, let's see, I'll keep this here. The new resultant vector, we'll call that R, has as its horizontal component uh, 1520.24 and as its vertical component 533.74. So now if I want to know what is the magnitude or the length of this new resultant, I can just use the Pythagorean theorem. So I can say uh, x squared plus y squared is r squared. And so r, which I'm actually looking for, is going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. So now if I take the square root of 1520.24 squared plus 533.74 squared, okay, and I take the square root of that, I'm going to get 1611.21. Okay, so we'll say about 1611. And this was in, I believe, Newton's. Yes, Newton's. Okay. Now, we also want to know what is the angle what is this angle, for example, here, right, that the resultant makes with the horizontal? Well, in that case, we can use tangent, so opposite over adjacent, or y over x. So here we could say tangent of theta is going to be 533.74 divided by 1520.24. And so theta is the inverse tangent of that. All right. And when you put that in your calculator, you're going to get that theta is 19.35 degrees. And that has understood that it's 19.35 degrees with the horizontal. All right. Now, I'm going to extend this a little bit. Um, you may actually come back to this video, and after you've learned a little bit about the law of cosines, you can see that you can solve this problem in a different way. So. Let's see if I have that picture again for you. All right. So here we assumed, and it was a reasonable assumption, that we could drop a perpendicular here to the horizontal and drop a perpendicular here to the horizontal and create two right triangles. And that's how we solved this problem. That's one way we used to solve this problem. And then that way we had purely horizontal and purely vertical components. And so you could just add those pure components. We're going to do this a different way using the law of cosines. So in that case, let's see if my drawing can be good enough. <laughs> you have muscle A, which is something like this, right? And then you have muscle B. Let's see if I can use a different color for B over here. All right, so here's uh, A and here's B. Right. Now, they tell us we know that B beta is 33 degrees, so that's here, and that alpha is 8 degrees. So the difference then here, the angle in between them is the, the difference, 33 minus 8 is 25. So in this case, we know that this is 25 degrees. Okay. Now, if we use the law of cosines, what we're going to do let me extend this a little bit to make it a little bit bigger. It makes it a little bit easier when you're doing these problems. So let's say we have this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a parallelogram, and what I'm going to do is, keeping this rigid, I'm going to slide this, right, like that. And then I'm going to draw, and therefore, a parallel here. Let's see if I can... <laughs> Not quite exact, but it's pretty good. And then here I'm going to finish this off and make this parallel. Something like that. Oh boy, that is not too good. <laughs> Drawing really does make a difference on these if you can do it pretty well. So let's see here, here. All right, it's more like that, right? All right, so here is our parallelogram. And what we want to know then is the resultant force when you add these. So when I move this over here, right, the resultant is from the uh, tail to the tip. So that would be this, let's see if I can get that right too, right here. 
there's my resultant. All right. So <clears throat> how can I find that using the law of cosines? Well, I know that if I were, there's a couple of different ways, but I need to find, I need to find this angle. So there's a couple ways to do that. One of the ways that I do it is I extend this line right here, and I know that this angle is 25, so obviously this angle is also 25, right? But I also know that this is a horizontal line, so the entire angle here is 180. Therefore, 180 minus 25 is 155. Right? There is another way you could do that, too. You could say this is 25, therefore that's 25. Right? So now we have 50. And we know that all four angles have to be 360, so you could say 360 minus 25 and 25, or minus 50, gives me 310. 310 for both angles, so divided by 2, and there you get your 155. So whichever way you prefer to do it, you do need to get that angle. And now you can say, okay, this side squared is equal to this side squared plus that side squared minus 2 times this, this, cosine of that, right? So let's go ahead and set that up. And let me go ahead and also label what the forces are so you can see it. So we had here A was 900. So let's write that in there. And B was 750. Okay. All right. So now what we have then Let's take a look. Let's write it over here so you can see it. Right, we have this. We have something that goes out like this. And then something that's like this. Right, so we had this is 750, 900, and we want to know R. And what we know is this is 155. So we know R squared is equal to 900 squared plus 750 squared minus 2 times 900 times 750 times the cosine of 155, right? So obviously r is the square root of all this stuff. I'm going to call it stuff. <laughs> I don't want to have to write it all in there. But when you put all this in your calculator, right, and then you take the square root, you're going to get that r is indeed 1611.2 which I believe is what we got doing this the other way. Remember when we did the two triangles that were right triangles? There it is, 1611, okay? And now what we can do is we can find this angle. Let's see here. We know the angle between A and B, but we don't know, let's call that something else. Let's call that here. We don't know this, the angle between the resultant and let's say A. And we can find that. Because we can find this angle, we know from the problem that the angle of elevation for um, A is 8 degrees. So if I just take 8 degrees and add it to alpha, I'll have the angle of the resultant relative to the horizontal. Because that's what the problem originally asked for. So let's go ahead and see if we can find then alpha. All right. So technically what we'd want to do is say, and don't forget that, let me just put in here that essentially here we have what? Eight degrees from here. So let's go ahead and sign up, set this up. We could say sine of alpha is to 750 as sine of 155 is to, and we know now, 1611.2. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say sine of alpha is to the side that it forms, 750, as sine of 155 is to the side that it forms, 1611.2. So then you can multiply both sides by 750. Sine of 155 divided by 1611.2. And let's see what we get. So here then alpha is, or let's see, sine of alpha is 0.19673, and then therefore now when you find the inverse sign, right, 0.19673, we get that alpha is 11.35 degrees. Now remember, 
alpha is this angle in here, but we also have these eight degrees from the horizontal to this force A. Right, that's right here. Muscle A is at an angle of eight degrees. So if I add the two, so if I add another eight degrees, I'll get 19.35 degrees. So that tells me that the resultant is at an angle of 19.35 degrees to the horizontal. And that's what we found when we did our original problem, all using right triangles. Okay, So I know this is an extension. Now you may want to come back to this later so you can see how the two basically use two different techniques to solve the same problem. One we did by resolving the vectors into their vertical and horizontal components. Because we had enough information to, we could go on and, and do the law of cosines. And so we also solve this using law of cosines and law of sines. Thanks so much for listening.